the sum of a finite arithmetic sequence. Of course, that's the series we're talking about, because when we sum the sequence, when we change those commas to plus signs, that's when we're finding the series, which was one single number, which was the sum of the sequence. Well, to find the sum of n terms, we can say it's the number of terms, n, divided by 2, times the quantity a1, the first term, plus a n, which is the last term. So let's dissect this. What are the parts of that we need to know? We need to know the number of terms that you want to sum. That's going to be the same number here. How many terms do you want to sum? And of course, this is the first term, that's always what a1 is, and this is what throws people off a little bit, a n will be the last term. So if I know the first term and the last term, and I know how many terms there are, of course I go with this equation. However, we also have a second option. The sum of n terms is a1 plus n minus 1 times d. What, what? I thought that was the general term. Oh yeah, I'm not done yet. If we double this and we multiply it all by n over 2. I love to use this one because it's easy to remember. I already know a1 plus n minus 1 times d. I double my first term and then I multiply by n over 2. Again, let's dissect this to figure out what we need to know to use this formula. I have to know the number of terms that I want to sum. So that n is the same as this number of terms. A1 remains the first term. And of course, d is our common difference. So, of course, this is the number of terms too. So students often ask, how do I know which one to use? Well, whichever is easier, depending on the given information. If I'm given the number of terms, the first term and the last term, I use that formula. Why? Because it's easy. If I'm not given the last term, but I do know the number of terms, the first term and the common difference, then I use this one. I'm always looking to use the easier formula. That's what guides my decision. When we're asked to find the sum of this finite arithmetic sequence, what they're really asking is, can we find the sum of the series? So if I want to convert this sequence to a series, it's as easy as replacing the commas with plus signs. And of course, I could take the fourth grader's view of this and add one plus three plus five plus seven plus nine plus 11 plus 13 plus 15 plus 17 plus 19. I better make sure my arithmetic skills are strong to come up with 100. Now, that's a fine method for doing this and it works. But what happens if instead of a few terms, I gave you 300 terms? Well, you better make sure your fingers don't touch the wrong button on the calculator, or if you're doing it by hand, that you've gotten every single one of those, uh, sorry, those little pieces of arithmetic correct. Perhaps we can take a more mature approach or sophisticated. This is A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, a6, A7, A8, A9, A10. So there are 10 terms there. How do I know? I just counted them up. I always label the first one I come to A1. Because I know the first and the last terms, my immediate thought is, well, the sum of n terms is the number of terms over 2 times the quantity first term plus last term. So I can plug and chug into this and say the sum of 10 terms
will be 10 over 2 times first term plus last term. So the sum of 10 terms is 5 times 20. The sum of 10 terms here, of course, will also give us 100. Why did that work so well? Because I knew that there were 10 terms, so I satisfied n. I knew a1 was 1, and my 10th term in this case, my last term, is 19. Perhaps, however, you have an affinity for that other formula that I showed you. The sum of n terms is equal to a1 plus n minus 1 times d. Oh yeah, there was a 2 there and an n over 2. So we could just as easily use this. I'm summing 10 terms. The sum of 10 terms is 10 over 2 times... 2, A1 was 1, plus number of terms is 10 minus 1 times the common difference. 3 minus 1 is the same as 5 minus 3 is the same as 7 minus 5. Our common difference, I can quickly tell you, is 2. So the sum of 10 terms is 5 times the quantity 2 plus, well, this is 9 times 2 is 18. And you can quickly see this is 5 times 20, which again gives us 100. So either way, you're going to get to 100.